Hello, my name is Mary O'Shea. This is my sign name because I laugh a lot. I have a wonderful cat named Rose. She doesn't really deserve that name, but she's a great cat. She actually communicates with me in my apartment without using any sound. The way she does that is by tapping and scratching at my feet. She always lets me know four really important things. If I forget to give her treats, if her food has run out, if her litter box is full, or if she'd like to go outside, she'll tap at my foot to tell me. It doesn't hurt. It's actually pretty cool. She's brilliant. I just started swimming. Sometimes it's kind of a struggle to get myself to go to the gym, but I started swimming as part of my exercise routine, which I really enjoy and look forward to. Actually, as soon as we're done with this interview, I'm going to go to the pool. I also love drawing, and I draw a lot. One of my favorite artistic styles is the Zen Tangle style, and it's kind of like doodling. I really love that. I also really enjoy drawing animals, mostly dogs and cats, and I usually use pencils when I'm doing that kind of drawing. Art's a big source of joy in my life. When I was growing up, I started off in the self-contained classroom with deaf and hard of hearing students until I was nine. After that, my family moved to London, England. So that was the first time that I was mainstreamed was when I was in London. I continued as a deaf student in the mainstream high school. It was very isolating and lonely and frustrating. When I was at school, I had no support. No note takers, no support services, no interpreters. It was really tough. My mother was pretty easy to speech read. She used gestures when communicating and moved her mouth in a way that was easy to read. My father, on the other hand, was very hard to speech read. He would just say a few words here and there, but I did grow up using speech trying to get by with lip reading, using powerful hearing aids, and could function pretty well in one-on-one -on -one settings, but not in group settings. Before I started my recovery process, I had no motivation and no energy. I slept all day, maybe 15 hours a day. So unfortunately, that was what my life was like back then before recovery. Before I started my recovery process, I was hopeless. I felt exhausted, depressed, and had no energy. At that time, I wasn't working, and I felt overwhelmed with everyday life. It was hard to take care of myself. It was hard to clean up my apartment. When I started to decline, I realized that I was sleeping way too many hours per night. I didn't care about calling my friends back, and I stayed home more and more often. I really had no motivation or interest for anything. I had a hard time focusing, and I had generally no desire to do anything. Those are the symptoms that clued me into the fact that I was declining. What happened was that I got very depressed. I lost hope and my will to live. And I guess you could say I was just generally hopeless. So eventually what helped me start to get back on my feet was that I started to reach out for mental health services. Someone would come over to my place twice a week and would help me out by giving the support with my daily life, giving encouragement to go out of the house, exercise more, and just starting to get my life back on track and help me start to think what I wanted to do for work. That was really the key, and that's what helped me get through my most difficult time by getting in touch with DMH and starting to use their services. It was also incredibly helpful to learn coping skills. For a long time, I was lethargic and I didn't do much. 
so I tried to rediscover myself. I did this by thinking back to what I was very passionate about and what I loved the most. And what I came up with was doing artwork, going to the beach, swimming, and reading. I also like to get out and walk, but the key here is peer support. Peer support is invaluable. When I was working at the Transformation Center this past year, I met a lot of deaf people from being on the board who are peers, and I made a lot of new friends at the Transformation Center. This was an important step in my recovery process for my self-esteem and generally just feeling good about myself. I would say that my strength is perseverance. I learned that from growing up in the mainstream setting. I had to persevere through that. Also to have hope that things will get better, things will improve, and not to give up. What I learned from my past experiences is that I really did not like to ask for help. I thought that asking for help was a sign of weakness. So throughout my recovery process, I learned to ask for help, and that it's a wonderful thing, and that people are willing to help me. They want me to get better. And second of all, I'd say that I learned that I'm a strong person and I have the ability to overcome obstacles and to recover. I am a very strong person. Also, I realize that I have a lot of shame tied up with my mental health diagnosis. So I've hidden that from many people over the years. What happened is once I opened up and told people, I found that people accepted who I am. And that was a wonderful learning experience. To think about the fact that I previously had so much shame and that's so freeing. There's so many barriers in the mental health services field. For example, I go to a clinic to get therapy and if the therapist is not there, there's no backup. And some of my services are limited. In the past year, my therapist has been out on medical leave. And there are only a few therapists able to work with me because of the communication barrier. They don't know sign language. And if you go to a hospital, there's not a lot of interpreting services and no video phones. It can be a very isolating experience for deaf people. And it can make us feel even worse. Ultimately, it was a mental health agency that helped me realize that what I needed to do was prioritize how to help myself. So now I'm always reminding myself that I need to focus on cleaning my house and need a structure in my life, that I need to keep up with exercising, going out with friends, and socializing. And that is something that has helped me significantly, and I have to remember these things. Positive affirmations help me get through challenging situations. So that would be like reading inspirational quotes, to read books that help me think in a more optimistic way, because sometimes it's hard to change our thinking patterns from negative into positive. In terms of keeping myself healthy, I really try to focus on wellness. Well, I'm trying to eat less sugar, but I love sweets, so it's tough. I'm trying to go for walks more regularly. I love knitting. I love making things and giving them away as gifts. Uh, Let's see, other things that I do. I really enjoy meeting with peers, getting together with friends. I have great friends who I use for support on the video phone. It's important that I stay in touch with these people for self-care. What has helped me change my negative behaviors and thinking patterns is realizing that I should be thankful for what I have. I have a roof over my head. I have enough food to eat. I have friends. I have family. And I have a wonderful cat.
My message for people out there who are struggling in their lives is never give up hope. There's always someone there to help you get support and get you back on your feet again. And remember, always ask for help.